I had to record this three times because the cat kept wanting to play fetch. She's a weird cat. But she's my cat. Anyway, stay tuned. I'll show you how to pivot. Hey everyone, welcome back to InventSmart. This is Kevin. And today I just got a few quick tips for you. I'm going to show you the pivot point and kind of what that does, as well as uh, the startup file and how to make a new startup file without having to have the same things in the scene all the time. For 3D printing, you really don't need the light or the camera here. Anyway, so the uh, pivot point, basically what that does is it just, every object has a center point and it basically is what the object pivots around. It's like the pivot point, basically. And when you move the object around in object mode, it stays with it. But if you move the object in edit mode, the pivot point stays where it's at. And sometimes when you're moving around an object, sometimes the pivot point will get all messed up and it'll be all confusing and it's kind of hard to deal with it when it, that happens. But sometimes it actually can be useful if you're trying to make something really symmetric and you want it to be exactly in the center you just put that there and then rotate the object say you want to rotate it on the z-axis 90 degrees it'll move it right there or like that and just keep moving it like that or if you press ctrl d or shift d duplicate it press enter rotate z 90 duplicate rotate So it does that and it just rotates it and so you have them all perfectly lined up. It can be useful to have it off center, but most of the time for most things I just use it in the center or anything. But in order to get that back to the center, there's a couple different things you can do. The first one is um, what you need to do is actually press spacebar and then type in set origin and you can do the, if you want to move the pivot point to the object, it's set origin to center of mass, and then it moves it there. Then you can move it back. Or, if you want to move the object to the point, it's the uh, first one, it's the geometry, geometry to origin. And the next one I'll show you. But or, origin to geometry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can't do it in edit mode. You got to do it in object mode only for the set origin. But origin to geometry, and that moves the pivot point to the geometry of the object. And another one, cool one is the uh, 3D cursor. Like I'll just move it around here. So it's right there. So if you hit set origin, origin to 3D cursor, it moves the pivot point to there. And so then the object stays there. And so the cool thing you can do with the uh, move to 3D cursor option, I'll show you here. The first, I want to just get it to the object and move the object back to the center. So shift S cursor to center, shift S cursor selection to the cursor, so it's back in the center. And just go into orthographic view from any angle. Go to edit mode. A to deselect everything. Select just the bottom four points. And then shift S. And then cursor to selected. It moves the 3D cursor to the selected cursor. Because whenever you select an object, like see, if I select that one and that one, it moves the temporary cursor to the exact middle of that, the, so basically the center of mass between all the pivot points. So that's there, there, and there, and there. But so for the other one, it, when I selected just those four, it had moved it just there, so the pivot point's there, so I moved the 3D cursor to there. So now we can set the origin to that. And so now this object has 
the origin set there so we can actually move it to the exact center of zero now with a shift s and selection oh actually move the cursor to the center and we move the selection of the cursor so the box is exactly positioned on zero now and one thing you can do with the, the uh, changing the pivot point to the edge like that is you can resize the object now on the z-axis with just the positive and it only moves on that and if you want to go the other way it'll do that too because if you have the uh, origin in the center of mass you can actually it moves it from if you want to resize it, it moves it from both ends of the object and when you're resizing it if you press S like right close to the cursor it's really sensitive and it's hard to mess up or I mean it's easy to mess up so if you uh, press S down here in the corner you get more of a feedback and if you press shift it slows it down to when you're resizing same with rotate if you want to rotate it slow hold down shift or not and it just does that and grab it if you want to move it slow just press shift and it slows it down basically it's kind of like a little handbrake to move objects and the manipulation with that but that's basically what the pivot point does and how you can change that and use that for different things I'll give you a quick little example here I'm saying say we have a little car axle or something like that here and it's up over here and we have a wheel we'll make a quick little wheel say we want to get this wheel exactly at the end of this object so what we can do is select all these here so that the temporary pivot point or the selection actually it's I don't know what it's called it's like the selection point it's like the center of mass of the object so you cursor to selected and then you can see this is in the center of the mass of this object but if we don't want it to be in the center we can take this object and go into edit mode Oops. and just select all of these and move the actually we're going to move the cursor back or have to move it twice so cursor to selected set origin and then origin to 3d cursor it moves that over here so that center is now on that edge if you look down and then we'll go back in here and then that's still selected so cursor to selected then we can just move this object selection the cursor so if we look at that and zoom in those two objects are perfectly matched and so there there's no gap or anything between them I don't know if you can join them together or not I'm gonna try real quick just to see something I don't use very often but it is useful so if you go boolean union cylinder it adds the object onto it I delete the temporary one so yeah it did it did add together perfectly there there's no gaps or anything and I'll just show the uh, 3D printing feature again if you hit distorted it kinda evens out all the different things into the different faces into more manageable things for 3D printing software to be able to handle but that's kinda bas the basics for the uh, pivot point and in order to save up or save the startup screen I'm just going to go ahead and open a new file. I have mine set to automatically open this little window here and start my screen capture. Actually, it's not working now. <laughs> Oops.
to know this, but so in order to save it as whatever you want, you can get rid of the camera and the light, then hit file, save startup file, and so whatever you do, if you take this and size it really big and mess it up, move that over here and add the blender monkey and you want to make a new one, new scene or something, just hit that and it goes back to what you have set as the default. And that's pretty much all I have for today and I'll keep bringing the tips to to you guys and teaching you things. If there's any questions of what you would like to have me show you or anything at all, just go ahead and leave me a comment and I'll see if I can get that put together for you. Any questions or anything about 3D modeling, gaming, anything with Blender really, I can show you pretty much whatever there is to do in it. I know pretty much most of the things, all the different features that it has. There's little things here and there that I never use, but I can learn about and teach you guys. So. Let me know. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day.